I decided to get a small computer to run a few tasks with a little lower power level versus using my whole desktop system. I had a few goals in mind for this computer. I wanted a low power solution that was still powerful enough to run a few applications. I decided to go with this mid-range and reasonably inexpensive B-Link mini computer. I will be primarily focusing on the power usage of this computer since there are tons of reviews showing the gaming performance, and I don't think we need another one of those, but thanks to all the great creators out there making them. Due to that, we have a good idea of the gaming performance of this class of machine. In this video, I'll go over the mini computer's specifications and figure out if it is the one that can fulfill my needs. The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how it stacks up. Of course, there are no competitors yet. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. So. Let's get this thing unboxed and see what we get. It comes fairly well equipped. It looks like the base model has already doubled the hard drive space versus what I bought, so that's good. The device has a very capable Ryzen 5560U CPU. The box comes with some hard drive mounting accessories, a power supply, and a getting started guide, and the actual computer, which is surprisingly small. The scale of this thing is quite surprising. I had seen them in videos, but didn't really realize how small these things are in person. The computer itself is equipped with not the most modern port selection, but enough to get you started. The front side has a USB-C port, headphone port, as well as a power and reset button, and a couple of other USB-A ports. The USB ports are all 10 gigabit capable, with the USB-C port being 10 gigabit capable, as well as video capable. This has no power delivery though, so no single wire connection. The back of the computer has a lot of ports. Power in, of course. It's a 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter barrel plug, so a little larger than the standard center pin on most devices. Gigabit Ethernet, more USB ports, in this case, the Slow Boat USB 2 ports. This varies, and some of these have USB 3 here as well, as well as a couple of display outputs, HDMI and DisplayPort. So, a pretty good set of options within this device. The ability to add another solid state hard disk is also nice if you need some extra storage. The computer opens up rather easily. Here we can see the internal bits, where the random access memory and solid state disk can be upgraded if needed. This is also where you'd add a SATA drive if you wanted some extra storage. So, now what I usually do here is focus in on power usage and power supplies. So, let's take a detailed look at the supplied power adapter. One thing I was very happy to see when I got this was that it actually does have a safety listings, which means it has gone through some testing to evaluate that it, in a fault situation, this is statistically won't fail in a bad way. The power adapter also has a six in a circle. This indicates that it has the Department of Energy six mark for energy efficiency. And when we go ahead and take a look at the data for this power adapter, it does meet those claims. The idle power usage and the efficiency are both good performance indicators. The voltage is fairly stable as well. Not a bad little power unit. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. This power adapter lacks power factor correction, which for a power adapter of this size is debatable on effectiveness. The fact is, the computer most of the time won't be anywhere near the limit of the power adapter, so for the 10 to 20 watts this computer will probably use on an average basis, this is an okay choice. If you have a lot of these, then I'd consider something different. Okay, back to the computer. Let's get things hooked up and powered on and see what the power consumption of this computer is in various states like off, idle, active, GPU and CPU active looks like. One of the things I noticed with this computer out of the box is the Windows installation that came with it is extremely broken and customized to B-Link. The first thing I did was download a fresh installation of Windows from Microsoft directly and reinstall Windows on here. The machine not only is more stable, but also faster. This is a mandatory step in getting one of these mini computers. The install supplied with the computer was broken in a lot of ways out of the box. So if you get one of these, reinstall Windows. In terms of performance, here are some basic figures for this machine. This is, as expected, right on target for a Ryzen 5560U CPU and Radeon Graphics integrated chip. Again, for the form factor, it is very impressive. There are, of course, also much faster systems available. The SSD in this computer is a PCIe 3.0 M.2 drive, so not the best performance, but not the worst. Here's the crystal disk mark numbers on that. 
it looks like a solid average performance. So here are the power consumption numbers on this computer in the various states. It looks like it bounces around as expected as the computer is doing various tasks, but the overall numbers don't look too bad. The computer does keep the power adapter in a higher power state even in the off mode, so keep that in mind. The idle and on state is a bit more power. And when activating the various parts, or both CPU and GPU, we can see that the power level at the wall spikes up quite a bit, which for a tiny computer is still not bad. Of course, as you do this, you start to make a little noise. The fans are certainly audible in this, but the sound is not too obnoxious. It is certainly audible though. So this computer does not support powering it from the USB-C port up front. Some of the newer versions of these do support that mode. I decided to try changing the power adapter. Power with a single adapter for the monitor and the computer by using a power delivery trigger. Here are the updated numbers, including the portable monitor power with a single USB power supply. We can see some of these figures improve and some get worse. It goes to show that the supply power supply is really not that bad. So because of this little older of a generation mini computer, it doesn't have a lot of things like USB 4 or the ability to add an external graphics card. So if you want a game on the system, it is limited to older titles or very reduced graphical settings. There are lots of videos of people doing it with potato graphics quality, so you have to search for that and see if you're interested in the gaming results. This could be a quite useful game emulator platform or very functional television console computer thing. The CPU and graphics are what you get when you buy it and you are locked into those options until it needs replacement. There are very limited upgrade paths. This being the computer market, there are always newer and more efficient models on the market, so searching for your specific needs is important. Does this work for a little office computer or do any kind of basic desktop application or even DaVinci Resolve? Yes, it can handle that whole range quite well. The limits are known, but the capabilities are also impressive, especially for the size. The next thing to consider is the cost of electricity and how much power this computer uses in various states. It will never be off, but it will never be in the idle state for my use case, so it's really more like 20 to 30% load all the time, occasionally more. Anyway, we can calculate or estimate the cost of the use based on the power numbers we have. I added a few different costs for electricity per kilowatt hour. So here's the first scenario, where the system is on for eight hours a day and off for 16 hours. During the eight hours, the system is idle four hours and active at half load for four hours. This is my example of a basic office type workload. Next example is more like what I would be using this machine for. Basically, always working at about 20-30% workload, then occasionally burst to higher usage. As expected, it costs more to operate in this mode, but the computer I have doing this now uses about twice as much power, so this is going to be a big power savings. So that's about it. It is a mini computer. There are tons of options out there and this is just one of the hundreds of options. The great thing is the low power consumption and the performance is exactly as expected. I think it is great how small and functional these computers have become. This will take over some of the basic processes I run on my normal computer and has more than enough performance to do so. The drawbacks would be a lack of performance on the graphics side because you can't add a better graphics card. The CPU is more than capable of running basic tasks. The GPU is good enough to run things like a Plex server though, which is one of the use cases I have for this system. One downfall of this tiny system is a tiny fan, which will be a little noisy and require cleaning to keep it spinning. The price point on this system is about 300 US dollars if you can find it on sale. This is a good value, I think. You get a very reasonable performance and well-built system for not a ton of money. This is obviously a last generation system, so it isn't going to be the fastest or most efficient, but it does mean that the BIOS updates are more recent and the thing is stable. Things I like and want in a box like this. I'd feel comfortable deploying one of these in a family member's house and not having to worry about it breaking after a short period of time. I don't like that the Windows install that came with the system was broken out of the box. I had issues where changes made to the system did not save and it crashed out of the box a lot. I expected to have to reinstall Windows and and did almost immediately do so after booting the system up. I did use the Windows 11 workaround to install without making a Microsoft account. So annoying. But it works for now. That's my only real complaint about the system is the bad OS install. Otherwise, things seem very usable and the system is fast and has been stable. Now to get some basic services up and running on this computer. Okay, 
Time to apply the stickers. Two this time, one on the computer and one on the power adapter. These are tested and on the database so you can take a look at how they stack up. The little computer isn't so bad. The power adapter is okay. Nothing special, safety listed at least. Thanks for watching. I have a bunch of power adapters and power banks to check out, so I want to get a video on them next. Not sure which one yet. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these products to get through, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.